Jazz Kids, Pastor Heather here. So good to see you. How are you guys doing? I want you to take a minute and check in with yourself. It's been a hard few months for a lot of us. I know this past week was difficult for a lot of you maybe hearing that you're going to be doing school online this fall and not being able to see your friends like you usually have at school. And so I know, I know that's hard, but I also know that God is with us, God's at work, and God is planning good things for your life if you're listening and watching. We're going to read today from the book of James and um, talk a little bit about anger. Have any of you been getting angry? I know I've seen some anger in my house. I've seen anger about all kinds of things. Anger from brothers and sisters fighting with each other because they're home a lot and together a lot. I've seen people getting frustrated with video games because maybe they don't win or their friend that they want to play with isn't online or maybe their brother or sister wants to play. All kinds of reasons to be angry. Maybe angry that people feel different than you. Lots of, lots of reasons to maybe feel angry. So the book of James today is going to tell us a little bit about anger. So let's read it together, okay? This is James, and it's chapter 1, verses 19 to 21. Here's what it says. Know this, my dear brothers and sisters. Everyone, who is that, guys? Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to grow angry. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. This is because an angry person doesn't produce God's righteousness. But you might be asking, but Pastor Heather, I was angry about something that was right. Well, the Bible says an angry person or human anger doesn't produce God's righteousness. Not in me, not in here, and not in the world either. Sometimes we can feel justified to get angry at other people because they don't feel the way that you think they should or they don't think the way that you think they should or even maybe the way that the Bible says that they should. But anger doesn't help people to get better. It doesn't help people to be like Jesus. So we can't really use anger as a tool to help us be like Jesus. Anger is an emotion that kind of sits on the top. And always underneath anger, there's other feelings. Maybe it's fear. Maybe it's sadness, grief. So when we're feeling angry, we need to notice why we're feeling angry and what's it really about. Are we scared? A lot of things to, that might make us feel scared in the world right now. It's okay to feel scared. Maybe we're sad. It's okay to feel sad. Sad that maybe you can't go to school like you normally have or sad that you aren't seeing your friends as much. Sad that you can't be here at church. I'm so sad that we aren't at church together right now. I miss all of you. I miss worshiping with you. But me being angry about that isn't what's gonna help. Let's see what the Bible says is gonna help. It says, therefore, so because everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry, therefore, with humility, what's humility? Can you tell your brother or sister what you think that means, or your mom, or your dog, or your teddy bear? Tell somebody what you think humility means. To be humble means to make sh to think, it, being humble means to be lowly or that you can let somebody else be right. That you could love your neighbor as you love yourself. It means putting another person first. So it says with humility, set aside all moral filth anything that isn't God's love and, and wickedness and welcome God's word planted deep inside of you, the very word that is able to save you. Isn't that beautiful? So basically what James is saying here is 
Since we should be slow to become angry, what we should do is to be humble, to do justly and love mercy, to love our neighbor as ourself, and welcome God's words. A lot of times I find that when I'm reading God's word, I'm reading it from a perspective where I want to be right. I want to be the hero of the story. But a lot of times, if we read God's word and we let it humbly come inside us, this word that's so beautiful and able to save us, sometimes I'm not the hero of the story. Sometimes maybe I'm more like Pharaoh in the story of the Exodus. Sometimes I'm more like Moses. Sometimes I'm like the slaves that are moaning and groaning because they don't like what's going on in the story. We need to look at God's word and see ourselves in all the different characters of the Bible and let that word do its work so that we can be mature and complete, lacking nothing. I have a balloon here and I just wanted to show you a little bit about anger. Sometimes something that happens when we're angry is we shove it inside of us, right? We don't say anything. We're mad, but we just keep our mouth shut, right? Because this verse, you know, it says that we should be quick to listen and slow to speak. So we just keep, keep all of it inside, slow to speak, right? but we're still angry inside. And you know what might happen if we are angry inside, but we're slow to speak? Oh my. <laughs> Sometimes we blow up. So that's not what this is saying. This is not saying to just keep all your anger inside until you blow up. This is saying to take your anger to God and to have him help you let the air out slow. And to do it in a way that honors God. So we use God's word and listening for God's voice. So when we feel angry, we can still be quick to listen and slow to speak. But then we take it to God and to God's word. And God helps us to do this. to let that anger out in a healthy way that's loving God, loving other people, and helping other people to know Jesus by the way that we act. Have a good day, guys.